Do you struggle with designing monograms like these? Or want to know a little bit more about how to design them? Well, stay tuned as I'm gonna be walking you through my process from start to finish. What's up designers, welcome back to Digifrog Designs. If you're new here, I'm Matt Roberts, brand identity designer and illustrator. Today, we're gonna to be continuing the monogram we started last week, refining it and producing the final design in Illustrator. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We post new videos every Wednesday, helping you become a better designer. Let's jump back into this. So now we're over to the computer. The first thing that we need to do is get the sketches of our monograms into Illustrator so we can look at how to start creating them. So to do that, I just took a picture of mine on my phone and then I used AirDrop to get that into my computer and then put them in Illustrator from there. These are the two that I've selected that I want to put together to see how they will come together and work. So we're going to be starting with the one on the left. Um, so I'm just going to zoom into that one a little bit further. There's a couple of different ways that we could do this. We could actually start by gridding the design out or we could actually use some line work and then fine tune it towards the end, which is the way that I'm actually going to be doing this. Um, I'll probably grid the second design just so you can see how that works. But I'm going to start with this first one and then we're going to walk through that. So to create the shapes that we've got here, I'm going to just select um, my rectangle tool and then I'm just going to start by drawing out a rectangle. I'm going to ignore the serifs to start off with. Um, I'm just going to switch that to a stroke and make it a wild color so we can see it. And then, I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to ignore the serifs to start off with because I'm not sure if I want them to be blocky or actually have um, a bit of shape to them. So by not focusing on them now will allow me to make that decision later on. So to start off with, I'm just going to start by constructing the actual letter forms themselves. So now I've got my rectangle there. I'm just going to boost that stroke up until it's roughly matches my sketch. I'm not looking for it to be perfect. Like I say I can fine tune it a little bit more at the end once I've actually completed the design and checked the spacing and everything. So now I've got my rectangle there. I'm going to use my direct selection tool to select the two most right points and um, the corner tool pops up. So what we can do is drag this in to create the curve part of our D. Luckily, because we're using two of the same shape here, what I'm going to do for this second D is I'm just going to copy that and then I'm going to paste it in front and then rotate it and then just pull it down to sit where that one is there. As you can see already, my sketch was slightly off with sizes, but that doesn't matter. We're going to be fine tuning where this all sits towards the end. Now I've got my second D in there. I'm just going to come over and grab the pen tool and I'm just going to roughly draft my F in there. So, so now I've got the rough outlines of the letter forms created. It's time just to check over the space. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to use a pen tool and I'm just going to draw out a few lines draw a few lines match that into there and then what I'm going to do is just select all of them I'm going to come over to my align panel and then I'm just going to make sure that I'm on selection I'm just going to distribute the vertical centers so now that I've got those four lines there with the right proportions in I'm just going to use them to correct the positioning of my lines here so So now I've distributed all of those lines evenly, you'll see that the letter forms are actually looking a lot better now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off my sketch layer um, for now, just so we can be working on the design here. There's still a little bit of awkwardness here that I'm seeing. Now I've distributed these evenly. So what I'm thinking is I want to do is pull this in a little here. So kind of creating an even space between the two sides. So now I've positioned that over to the left a little bit more just to balance that side of things out. Um, it's pulled this F along here, but I'm kind of liking the way that this could possibly follow around the serif that I could add on here. So for now, I'm just going to move all of these lines um, that I've used for spacing out of the way. The next thing that I like to do once I've got the main composition done is look at how I would like the serifs to form. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. As I mentioned before, I wasn't sure how the rectangle serifs were looking. So to do that, I could just use the pen tool again, or I could also just use the rectangle tool and match the width of the lines up and just use those to position in there just to, to work out where I would like the serifs to fall and how big they'd like, I'd like them to be. 
for me, I kind of want a bit more of that retro vibe. So I'm wanting a bit more shape to my serifs than just having blocks. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna just zoom in and I'm gonna use my pen tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plot a point um, somewhere on the back here, holding shift, pull it out to somewhere that um, I'm happy with, plot another point, and again, I'm just gonna do a short vertical, and then I'm just gonna come back over here plot a point on this vertical line here and then I'm just going to hold shift and drag up allowing me to create the serif there I'm just going to take that handle out of there and then I'm just going to come in here and then just finish that off if I did want it a bit short I could select everything here drag everything over and then maybe fine-tune the um, shape of the serif there so once I've created one of the serifs that I'm happy with, I'll actually use that on all of the other um, shapes as a starting point, just to try and keep them all uniform. So as you can see, it's starting to come together. So what I'm thinking of for the crossbar of the F here, I'm actually thinking of putting a bit of a shape on to it here. So almost mimicking what I've got here, but not to the same degree. So I might use this and see how it looks um, and then take it from there. So I'm just gonna flip it and then position it to the end. And then what I might do is just drag these points up I'm kind of liking the way that that flows and fills in here. Um, I might pull the whole part of this end back just to create an even balance between the two sides, um, just to keep the negative space in here and here the same. So now it's all starting to come together. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline all of my paths that I was using before. Before I do that though, I'm just going to make a duplicate of it. So if I do want to come back, um, I can actually have got the ability to do that. So I'm selecting everything here, and then I'm gonna come up to Object, and then Expand, and then just click on OK. You'll see how everything's been converted into, or it's all been converted into shapes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna neaten up all of my serifs that I added before. Now we've got to this point, it's at this point you can decide whether you want any shadows in there, any um, cutouts, anything like that. Um, if, you're on, if you're happy with the design as it is now, you can actually finalise it, put some text around it maybe, or just use it as it is. Um, what I'm going to look at now is actually positioning some shadows into the design just to try and give it a bit of depth and dimension. The way that I'm actually going to create these cutouts to create the 3D effect of the monogram is I'm actually just going to use the rectangle tool and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position three squares for now next to one another and then I'm just going to position those inside this here and the reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to gauge my thickness for my cutouts so now I've got a roughly a third of the line width um, some the third is just something that I like to do um, and it works quite well as a starting point and um, depending on how it looks at the end I can make it a little bit thicker because the way that we're gonna do this is we're not actually gonna start by cutting anything out of the design we're just gonna be using these on a white fill and stretched across the lines and positioned to give the impression of the the cutouts in there that way while we're positioning them into the design we could actually maneuver them make them thicker thinner and then only once we're happy with where we've actually positioned the cutouts we can actually remove them from the design to actually finalize the design and draw it all together so i'm just going to go over this now and put some of these shadows in and then um, we'll get back at it and then take the next steps So now I've added all of those in there, um, I can go through and just fine tune um, if I wanted to make them, them thicker, um, thinner, I can do that. I'm actually kind of liking the way that they're looking at as it stands. So now I'm happy with those, I'm just gonna change it over to black just so I can get a better feel for the design. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with where that is sat at the moment. 
So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to make another duplicate of this, drag it off to the side, and then what that's going to allow me to do is to go through and actually take these shadows out or take the cutouts actually out of the main shape but I've still got the original to go back to if I do want to change any of the design so I'm just going to go through and cut all of these out now One thing I will mention is when you're cutting the shapes out, if it's not doing what you want it to do, it may be just the fact that the layers are, or the shapes are grouped together from before, so you might just need to ungroup everything. So now I've got all of my cutouts cut out, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to join all of my serifs to the design. If you're having any issues joining any of the serifs to the shape so let me just select these and show you what i mean so if we're trying to join these two here you can see that it's not actually joining there might just be a little bit of room between these two shapes so what i like to do is just make sure everything's ungrouped um zoom right in yeah and as we can see there's a little bit of space there so what i'm going to do is just now i've got the whole shape selected i'm just going to switch back over to my direct selection tool and then just line those up there as you can see that's got rid of that gap and now if I select everything and go back to my unite function on my pathfinder it'll, it unites it perfectly I'm just going to quickly switch over to outline view and just check things over um, there's one thing that you might want to do as an additional to this is you'll see here where we've joined the series on there's a few extra um, path points or where you've cut things out there's a few extra um, anchor points in there and um, what I like to do is just select my delete anchor point tool and just go through and remove some of the extra anchor points that I don't want in there. Now I've cleaned those up, I'm, I'm kind of happy with where this is sitting now. So if you wanted to, you could go a step further and add some textures into this, um, but we'll take a look at that in another video. Um, but for now, this design is done and I'm fairly happy with how it's come together. Um, so let's move on to that other design um, that focuses more on an outline shape. So now we're going to move over to the second design. I'm just going to walk you through another way that you could possibly approach creating one of these designs. So to do this one, I'm going to start off by creating my grid for the design. So I'm going to start by drawing out a square, um, roughly to the size that I want the design. Once I'm happy with where that's sat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Object, Path, and then Split into Grid. And then what I'm going to do is for this one, um, it all depends on the design, but for here I'm going to be working with an 8x8 grid. And you can see the lines fall quite neatly into there. So again, I'm just going to select all of these and I'm actually going to come up to View, Guides, and I'm going to click Make Guides in there. Made them a bit faint, but you can still see them. So the way that you could go about doing this is you could use the rectangle tool and draw out your shapes um, as a solid. And this may sound a little counterproductive to start off with, but bear with me for now and I'll show you why this way works in a moment. So what I'm going to do is start with a rectangle and then I'm just going to draw that over there for my 45 degrees for these lines here. Um, the bottom is going to be the same as this top here so I'm going to duplicate that and then drag it to the bottom and then I'm just going to flip it over so again now I flip that over I'm just going to grab another rectangle and then start constructing that in there up to my grid lines and then I'm just going to repeat this process for the, throughout the whole design If you don't have a set goal of where you want the grid to fall, this is where you can actually run into some problems. Like here, I feel like this space is a bit awkward. So what I could do is I could drag all of this up and the same with everything here, drag it up just to try and create a better balance between the shapes. And yeah, I'm kind of liking that a little bit more. It's just giving me the kind of a better vibe of what I'm wanting. Um, Another thing I'm going to do is the serifs I think are, are way too big 
So I'm gonna pull these back half the width of my grid and then I'm just gonna create a few more of these half grid rectangles just to create the serif for the bottom halves of my F cross bars. So the one thing that I'm noticing again is a problem here. The F itself is stuck on here. So what I'm gonna do is pull this out half again just to create a little bit more room between the design. Just because we gridded it out doesn't mean that we have to stick to it. It's just all about creating a balanced look and it's just another way of, that you can do this. So I'm kind of liking the feel that's there and I'm just gonna hide my guidelines for a moment and just zoom out just to see how it's looking. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna create a duplicate of this, drag it off just so I can come back to it. So what I'm gonna do now I've done that is I'm just gonna unite the whole thing back together again. So that creates one giant shape out of the whole thing. Bear in mind, we've still got our broken down one here that we can actually refer back to if we need to change anything. And then to create the shape and effect that we were, I was looking at before, is I'm just gonna switch it over to a stroke. And I'm just gonna bump up the stroke weight here just to find something that I'm happy with. So that's a walkthrough on how I go about creating a monogram design in Illustrator, like I say with this one, it's a bit counterintuitive starting off with the solid blocks. By doing it that way and rather than focusing on the actual outline of the design first, allowed me to create a more balanced design. Thanks for watching designers. If you like this video, smash that subscribe button, give it a like, and also don't forget to ring that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. Share this video with your friends on social. It really helps reach more people, educating them on building better brands and showing them what actually goes into designing them. And shop the merch to support the channel and share you part of the DFD crew. I'll catch you next week, designers.